In the Division 2's Dark Zone, you're competing against other players to find the best loot in the area. This can be found by taking control of landmarks, or stealing chests and drops around the map, or taking the loot directly from other players by going rogue and taking them down. Down in the description down below as well, there is a link to the open beta for the Division 2. This goes from March 1st to 4th if you'd like to check the game out for yourself. Some loot is instantaneous, known as clean loot. This is loot that can just be picked up and moved instantly into your permanent inventory just right then and there. When players kill you, they can't touch it. it. That means that you can still make progress with your character even if you're losing most of your PvP fights. It just probably is not as fast progress as you would usually do if you were winning those fights. Enemy players can only take the contaminated loot that you have on your person and how to safely store your contaminated loot is just like it was in the original Division with a helicopter extract. These are loud, visible across the entire dark zone and are a very easy way to bait players into a trap or also get surrounded while trying to get your loot out of the map. Luckily, the Dark Zone works a bit differently this time around. The new Dark Zone has normalization, so now a level 1's rifle will have the same damage as a level 40's rifle. Same goes for armor, your knee pads, your vest, your headgear, any other statistical thing on your body is all normalized, so a level 40 knee pad isn't going to do any more protection than a level 1 knee pad. And also, there's not just one Dark Zone anymore, there's three with different types of combat in each and every one. The East Dark Zone is all about that long range combat, you're talking sniper rifles, your DMRs, your semi-automatic like AR style rifles. You're talking about Dark Zone West where you got mid-range combat where an AR or LMGs are really going to reign supreme there. And then my personal favorite was Dark Zone South which is all about that close combat because for me personally, I really did like using the shield, the combat shield in our first playthrough uh, as well as the combat shotgun, semi-automatic shotguns with the the, with the tactical shield, the in-game sort of gear, was uh, definitely something that was very, very nice to use. So again, you have normalization in the game, but also as a low-level player, you don't have those abilities, those those tactical shields unlocked. Those are um, kind of held until higher levels of experience within the game. The locations are very dynamic in terms of play styles that players will use in them. I like the close combat Dark Zones the best, as I could use the half gun shield with a shotgun and just demolish players at close corners, but also I could switch to the LMG and mow down players around medium range. I personally wasn't too good at sniping in the longer ranged areas though, so I kept to the shotguns and the LMGs the most until my teammates, hey, you guys need to be using the snipers. So if you're like me and can't snipe a barn door at five feet away, make sure to keep off those main streets and stay inside the hidden areas of the dark zone. For the hardcore guys out there, the Occupied Dark Zone also exists. This is a random Dark Zone that will get chosen as the Occupied one. And this is where there's no levels, there's friendly fires on, the, there's no rogue status indicator. It's a true competitive experience where every single point in your gear matters. And that's where the in-game players I think are most likely going to be competing against each other, trying to get their builds better than other players. And I'm excited to try that out once I'm playing the game a little bit more. Now a few tips that I've learned from both playing this game as well as games in the past that are kind of similar to this is that your visibility is everything. These are city streets and so you know, there's not really a game that's similar to this where you're fighting within a very urbanized environment, if that's even a word. Urbanized? <laughs> it's probably not. But uh, you're fighting down city streets, and now because it's not New York and it's more of Washington, D.C., it's not just blocks. It's it's very dynamic roads. There's a lot of uh, different areas, and some areas are very long range, some areas are very short range. The maps are very good at being different and dynamic for every location. But the main thing is, is that those roads are still quite open. There's cars down the sides of them, but then other than that, there's nothing blocking you from seeing another player that is 300 meters down the road. Now also, you don't immediately see the name tags above players either, so it's kind of difficult to spot them unless you actually visibly saw them run behind an object or you saw their head or something like that. It's a quite realistic feeling when you have to truly scan your environment to find other players at longer distances. And that means that if you have a lot of loot on you and you have a lot 
lot to lose. Staying off the main roads and staying on the sides and using the scenic routes, the long paths that aren't exactly as fast as just running down the sidewalk are probably going to be better for you. I found that when Level Cap and I were playing this, we were just two people versus mostly squads of three or four. Um, when we were playing this together, we had a lot more success when we were using the side paths rather than the main roads. It was just almost a death sentence to be just walking down a road in the middle of the day. A lot of the players, I don't know if this would change once the full game is out, but a lot of the players resorted to just flat out 100% PvP. If you saw another player, you would eventually have a PvP fight with them. There was really no teamwork going on between squads, no communication. It was more of just, hey, I see you, I'm going to fight you because you might have gear on you. So for me personally, staying hidden was the number one way of surviving, and especially when you got around the helicopter extracts, making sure that you weren't in the center of the extract zone, that you were hiding on the sides, waiting for the other players to really fight each other and fight each other out before you went in and tried to extract your gear, that was what was the most successful for me. It was very similar to other games that we play where you can have two teams fighting and you don't want to fight them immediately as you see them because you realize, hey, if I wait uh, you know, one or two minutes for these other two teams to fight each other, then I won't have to fight as many people once I want to enter that firefight. That is something that really is important here, choosing your shots and making sure that you know what you want to do and not biting off more than you can chew. If you are a solo player and you see a squad of four guys, there is zero way you're going to be able to take them down. Down. They're just really, really strong in this game. I mean, it sometimes takes two max to take out one player. So if you're going into the ideal of, hey, I want a 1v3 or I want a 1v2, that's harder and harder in this game than it is in many other games just because of the time to kill differences. As well as team play is very, I would say, suggested in this game. I mean, you've got friendly name tags. In the standard dark zones, there's no friendly fire, so you can't, you can't even hurt your teammates, and you can immediately know if an enemy is is a teammate or not because you would have your friend's name over their heads either way. So a very, I would say, important suggestion is that you don't play solo. This is a game where I feel like firepower is everything. Making sure that you have enough people to kind of flank around or also just suppress the enemy forces, that is something that's very, very important. As a solo player, you really can't be sneaky other than just your walking paths in this game. When you want to actually extract your gear from the dark zone, that is going to be something that you can't do quietly. You have to call in a helicopter extract just like everybody else. You have to do the same amount of things to get your stuff out of the dark zone. You can't just exit the dark zone and say, all right, there we go. So playing solo is quite difficult. When you're in a squad of four though, it is much easier to play in the dark zone. Most teams that you see around the dark zone are also squads of three or four. And so maintaining a good team with good communication is everything. And I think that once you do have that team with a lot of communication going through, just like any other shooter games you have, you'll win almost every fight. Anyways, guys, that's the, all the tips I have to give you from my experience in the dark zone. Definitely for me, once I started focusing on staying stealthy in the dark zone and trying to sneak up on other players rather than just run around and kill every AI I ever saw, I think I was doing a lot better overall in the dark zone than what I was doing before, which was basically just getting ambushed by team after team after team and not being able to get loot out of the map. So guys, that's all I have for you today, and I'll see you in the next one.